Right, everyone, welcome to August 2023 Damster Insights version 23.1. This is a new features overview, and my name is Ruth. I'm a trainer at Damster Techno Technology, and today I'm going to show you some of the new features from our upgrade to Insights at the beginning of August. You'll see that we've already started recording today's session, and that will be available for you to watch if you miss any of the content, need a refresher, or for those customers that could not attend this webinar. You'll see that your microphones are switched off, but please, if you have any questions, pop them into the chat. I have some wonderful support people, including an expert Paul, that can read your questions and answer while I'm presenting. I'll review any unanswered questions at the end and get back to you. If you are interested in accessing Damstra Academy for training videos, then please email service at damstratechnology.com, attention the training team, and Prakash will put that email address in the chat for you. So I'll turn my camera off for you to concentrate on my screen and let's get started. So this is our, um, with our Insights webinar. Some of the things we're going to learn today, the first thing will be our visual gallery updates, where we can filter, favorite a visual, and color removed. I'll show you what that looks like. Starting at my dashboard, and open Insights, and it opens up in our homepage or library of dashboards. Getting over to the visual gallery, you'll see that you can still share or add a visual. And over here, we could search by all the type of visual, the name of the visual, the data source, or the author. You can favorite and unfavorite a visual now and look at those in your favorites. Any dashboards, you, any visuals you have created, any shared with you, or all of the dash, all of the visuals. You'll also also see that the column with how many times the visual has been used has been removed. We'll head back to the library, and let's look at the next new feature. Dashboards, we now have view mode and creator mode. There's a responsive dashboard layout and we have local visuals. I'm gonna open up one of our standard dashboards called events register. And there's no magic of video editing here, but um, trust me, Insights is very fast and we'll just have to wait till it reads or talk about the weather. But we'll wait till that reads, and that's going to open up in the events register. And if I scroll up, here's our standard events register. And you'll notice that if I clicked on this event register by event type, I can't do anything with it, can't resize it, I can't shift it. That's because now dashboards have a view mode and a creator mode. I'm going to save this events register as one of my own, just by going over here and going save as. And I'll save it as events register webinar. And now you'll see that I have this new prompt called Convert All Visuals from the Visual Gallery to Local Visuals. Local visuals are exclusive to these individual dashboards and not stored by default in the Visual Gallery. That means if you create or add a new local visual, you can adjust it, tweak it, experiment with it, and then you could add it to the Visual Gallery for reuse in other dashboards. So that should declutter a lot of your Visual Galleries. I'll choose local visuals and save my new events register.
and up at the top, we'll see that my events register webinar has been saved. And it's renamed it over here. I come down to this visual again. I still can't do anything with it. That's because this is in view mode. And you'll notice here a new icon. And this is a toggle where I can toggle or switch between view and creator mode. In view mode, mode I can't move or resize my, resize my visuals. I'll go to creator mode. And in creator mode, I have all the functionality on the right hand side menu. But there's a new banner, and this is the new responsive dashboard layout. Where you can reshape, resize, lock, swap and align visuals quickly for a variety of user devices. From large, large screens through to mobile devices. And visuals can be dynamically adjusted to fit different resolutions. I'm going, instead of converting that, I'm just going to close that for now. And you'll see, I can now resize my visual and move it. So that was view and creator modes of local visuals. What's next? The context menu on visuals. In this donut, there is an add empty section, and I want to remove that section. Previously, if I clicked on the segment, you would see a semicircle of options, like a little dial. Now, when I left click on it, it's a new list or context menu. It's the same options such as details, filter, trend, zoom. I can go to my settings from here or remove that segment. I can also go to settings using the three dots on all the visuals here. I'm going to left click on that segment and remove that segment. And you'll see removing that segment, I haven't had any prompt. It's doing its thing. Hopefully I did that thing. That's better. And I've removed that segment. If I thought, oh no, I didn't want to do that, down here on the bottom left is a little undo. And we'll get that segment back. So that was about removing segments from a visual. And that's a wee bit different from up here in the settings, remove that widget or visual. If I want to remove the whole thing, it says, are you sure you want to remove the visual event register by event type? No, I don't want to do that. Table visuals. There's a lot going on with these table visuals that I'm excited to show you about today. So let's get on to some of these. Column text wrapping, formatting dates and numbers, multi sort in a raw data table, exporting, and conditional formatting. So I'm going to head down to our safety events register. If I scroll along to my description, And it's quite long. And if I pull that in like that, I think, why isn't it wrapping text? Well, there's a little step I need to do. And let's go up to these three dots and wrap that cell value. Now, this isn't perfect at the moment because it's, it's splitting words up. It's not recognizing spaces. But we've got a ticket into the developer and that should come out in the new release. 
I head back over to the left hand side. I've got event date. I open that up a bit. The event date looks like our calendar date down at the bottom of the time bar. For this column date, I can actually edit that event date or the format that event date. Clicking on those three dots, format that event date. And from format that event date, I've got year, numeric or two digit. That means I can have 2023 or just 23. My month is short, such as JUN for June. Long is the full month. Narrow, just the first letter of the month. Numeric, what number of the month it is. And two digit. I'm going to make my month long. And with my weekday here, I can also have short, narrow, or take out that weekday. I'll make that short. And my day is two digit or numeric. So I'll apply that. Now that doesn't affect the time bar date down here, just the event date in that column. And there it is there, the event date. We've also got a new feature where you can format numbers as well. So just for this example, I'm going to use my event ID. And I can format that event ID. With our number for format, we could have a plain number, a percentage, money, storage or scientific notification. The unit multiplier I've got is none. However, I could have thousands, millions, billions, or even trillions. My decimal place, I could add two decimal places there. Have my negative display in brackets or just as a minus. And use the thousand separator. I'll show you what that looks like. And there's our event ID there. And our event date. You'll see that the event ID has an up arrow and a one, which means it's sorted by event ID ascending. I could have that descending just by clicking on event ID. And now it's descending. It's also got a two here, which means it's sorted by something else. I'm going to scroll across here, and here we have. We've got sorted by the full site. I'm going to click on that and reset that full site sorting. Now when I scroll over here, my event ID is sorted. But again, if I wanted to sort by event ID and event type, click on event type, sorted by event ID first and event type second. And I could go along and sort all of these columns. Another option we have here is called grouping. So if I wanted to group by, say, the event status, click on those three dots and I'm going to group by event status. And you'll see it's taken my column from over here grouping down to the start of my columns here. I could also group by person reported, person type, subject name, and have different groupings, but when I open them up, it would be in a tier.
So that was about formatting a number, formatting a date, and grouping, multiple column grouping, and multi-column sorting. So with my event register, now that I liked it, I could come up here and I could export that to a screenshot or a PDF. Going up to the top again, I'm going to talk about the raw data table and sorting in a raw data table. So how do we get a raw data table? If I go to a segment, I'll go to my injury segment, left click again for my context menu and choose details. This opens up in a raw data table. My event type being the injury, that segment, how many there was, my time bar and the source. What I showed you before, you can do that here as well. What happened? Wrap that cell value. Sort by event date. And I can also group. Group by event status. So this is my raw data table. From those data details, I could open this up as another table in my dashboard. Or I can export that raw data as a CSV. And now from our new features, you can export that raw data as a spreadsheet. All right, so there's column text wrapping, formatting date, multi-sport, and export to spreadsheet. I want to go in a little bit into this conditional formatting, because I think this is the one you'll enjoy the most. I'm going to click on my library, discard my changes, and just open that up again. You'll see that it's opened in creator mode. Right. So this is viewing it in creator mode. Let's see what it looks like viewing it such as a PDF or scheduling it to someone. We'll have a look at it in view mode. You'll see not much has changed. But I can't shift things around. I'm going to go back to creator mode. And I want to talk a little bit about these things here. These are called KPI visuals. So I can do some things with conditional formatting or KPI in here, KPI visuals. First thing I'm going to do, so I'm going to get rid of that empty status. And then resize these. Move that along. And I like that it has those little guides to say you've got visuals of the same type, the same size. All right. So this event count. Going to go to the settings. And you'll see there's a new icon in your settings called widget settings with headers and pickers. The header is what that is there, event count. And the pickers are these things down here. So I like my event count heading, but what I want to do is hide the pickers and apply. I could also rename that event count. See how good my typing is. Can put
and apply that. Table of events last 12 months. My type, my head are shown and my pickers are hidden. This thing here, I can go up to my settings and these new positions down here. So I could center that. Let's have a look at that in Vimo. So that's what it would look like there. And I could go ahead and do the rest of them. I'll show you that again. Go settings, settings, put it in the middle. I forgot to go back to creator mode. Apply them, apply. Right, see what that looks like. Oh, I forgot to do those two. Back to creative mode. Settings. Hide. Oh, and apply. It's probably where I went wrong. This one. Hide. Apply. Now let's have a look. So that's looking quite good already. In Danstra Safety, we know that not started is red, completed is green, and underway is orange. Let's change this one to orange. Settings, my color palette. Click on the background color, and I'm going to choose orange. Easy as that. And just like that, it disappeared, Paul. Oh, these things happen in life. So just open it up again. Right, back here again, remember how I said I want to show my header, hide my pickers, and put it in the middle. There's something else I could do with this as well. Is to click on the three dots. I want to hide my header and click apply. Go to my settings and I've got a metric label here. So what if I was to put in the metric label Now I've got 15 total events for the last 12 months. So I could make them across that whole table just like that. I'm going to scroll down to my event register again. And with this, there are also conditional formatting as well. Go to my settings. That new icon is called conditional formatting. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to add a rule. And I want to add a rule that my event type 
where it includes injury and continue. I don't want to format that whole row. Turn that off and add formatting. And I want injury, the text color, to be red. And I also might make that text size a bit bigger. Probably not that big, that big. Continue and apply. So there's my injury in red and a little bit bigger. I'm going to add another rule. Add another rule that my event status completed, continue, and this time I'm going to format that entire row. row. And if it's completed, I want the background colour to be a nice light green. So now my injury is in red, my completed is in green, and I might add another rule, my entire role, row, that the event status underway, that the background colour is our orange. So you can do quite a lot there in that conditional formatting with changing the text size, the font. And it's looking quite colourful there now. I probably would change the font colour. So I'm going to click on that one just to amend it. And I'm going to add that the text colour is white. Continue, apply. Oh, goodness me, maybe I did too much, but um, you'll work it out. So there's the events register looking very colourful, watch whatever way you want it. You can also underline and put things in italics as well. So now that I've got my event register just about sorted, I'll have a quick look at that. My events, and I can do the rest of them. My event register. I'll go back to creator mode and look at this bar graph. And with this bar graph, go to the settings. Again, I could show my header, but not my pickers, so I will hide them and apply. And then I'm going to go to the settings and you'll see now I've got a group labels position because before the latest release of Insights, we only knew of the worker or the third party or trainers being inside. Now there's this really cool option where I can have my group, my group labels position outside. outside diagonal or outside vertical. If I was to enable a subgroup inside, outside horizontal and outside vertical. My subgroup here, person type, I could have the event type as well. As a clustered bar chart, stat bar chart, or how since stat bar chart. Um, 
I'll just shoot back down here, show, hide, fly. Let's have a look at that one. That's not too bad either. So now that I've made all my visuals and I quite like my report, there's another thing I could do. And I didn't put this in the menu at the start because I didn't know how much time we've got, but I want to show you something else. And it's called up here, a rich text snippet. So I'm going to add a rich text snippet. I grab that. I'm going to put it right at the top. And here, this could be the uh, the title of your report um, or um, who it's for. So you've got body text, header two and header one. If I make header two and I'll call it ABC annual report. And I'll make a header one. So with that Southern Sites, I could also choose my font colour. I could bold this one. I could also add my company logo here. As long as your company logo was in the image of a URL, you could put it in there and have it on the left hand side or in the middle. We'll just make that a bit smaller and have a look at that. So there's your ABC annual report Southern Sites. I go back up to my settings. And it's got the display name, untitled rich text. Here I could make that. and apply that. Or I could just, that header, I could hide that, apply. So it looks like that, or like that, and I'd retitle that. So I've got this great report and um, it's all finished and I love it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a report where I've been playing with it for a long time. So I'm going to go to my library and it's called my annual report. It's opening in creator mode because I did it. And you'll see that I've had a heap of fun with all these uh, new features and abilities. So if I view that, here's my annual report. My total events, I've left it just with um, the figures in the middle. My events register. My diagonal outside of my top events. These are called heat maps and are really good for showing different types of, say, corrective actions overdue. My bubble map and my location of events. And you think, well, now I need to schedule that. In this new version or this, these new updates, you'll see now that I can schedule reports from the dashboard. Just going to shoot back here. Schedule reports from the dashboard toolbar and schedule the dashboard for non-insights users. So Paul will probably put something in the chat, but he's got to make this really clear to you. If you want to schedule a dashboard, for an external email address, and they're not Insights users with permissions and site structure and all those kind of things. 
the contents and permissions for these reports are going to be from the person that scheduled the report. Not who created the report or the dashboard, but who scheduled it. So what I'm going to do is go new schedule. And you'll see the recipient is me. I'm going to take myself off. And I'm going to choose someone from the, you can still choose people from your drop down list. So. Or choose for shell. And then I'm going to add an external person. So I might choose Jimmy Chu at shoes.com. Enter my message. And my frequency being daily, weekly, monthly, or just run once. So I'll do that monthly on the first of the month for the next year. And save that. So my annual report has been scheduled and saved to Vishal in my company and Jimmy Chu outside my company. And I could also delete that scheduled report. Ruth, if you don't mind, I just want not mind just saying something, uh, stressing the security component of, of that. Um, Absolutely. I was hoping you would, Paul. I sure. deal with this angry cat here. Okay, excellent. So, um, so when you're setting up a, a schedule, if you're logged in um, and you have really high access to um, to the data in your system, so in say for example, data safety, you've got really high access to things like say uh, let's like say sensitive events or um, or uh, a large portion of your site. When you schedule that report out um, to people that do not belong to or don't have a user account inside Dempster Insights, then um, yeah, they will see the whatever data you have access to. So just be very mindful of that, that um, yeah, you, you, you might want to double check what your run report is going to send out just to ensure that it actually, um, yeah, you're, you're aware that if there's anything sensitive uh, in there that um, yeah, you, you need to adjust that. Uh, that's why we do prefer that, um, that people schedule reports to recipients that have um, insights accounts so if you if you do that then that's going to be great at what it will mean is if um, if you're scheduling to recipients that have Dempster insights accounts it's going to use their credentials to to run that report so you don't have to worry about any security um, implications there it's only if you are scheduling that out to external um, users thanks so much Paul I'm so glad you cleared that up because um uh, sorry I didn't explain that well enough but anyway, so I've scheduled that report, got all my filters there. There's my dashboard. I could also export that as a screenshot or a PDF. And I'll just show you what that looks like. Open that up. Bring this over here. So there it is, ABC Southern Sites. Clean it all up, everything's the same size. And I'll head back to the library. Well, I see Paul's done a great job as answering those questions. If you have any more questions, please pop them into the chat and we'll get back to you. Otherwise, that was part one of Damster Insights new feature release. Uh, there are also YouTube videos of part one and part two, just with an overview if you need more guidance. Uh, keep an eye on that YouTube channel or Damster Academy. Have the great rest of your week. Thank you so much for your time. Take care and I'll see you again soon.